it's interesting, right? We talk about startup and developers, and um, there might be guys in here that are in startups but are not developers. There might be developers that are in startups, and there might be developers that are not in, in startups. We're, we're trying to create this content in such a way that there's something for all of you. Um, so I hope we, we can add value in that, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk throughout the session on how we're going to do that. So this first session is kind of like the introduction and provides the framework for the rest of the session throughout this track. Um, and we call it AWS Enabling the Startup Lifecycle. Now, imagine that you begin your, your startup in a garage, right? As a lot of the cool startups like Amazon and others have done. You build a fantastic application, and people really love it. Now everyone wants to use it. Now, now what? In a way, that's great, right? That's what you want as a startup. But at the same time, they sometimes refer to this as a success crisis, when everyone suddenly comes. Now, fortunately, we've helped a lot of companies deal with this. One example is this company. Which company has achieved all of this with only three engineers? 14 million users in a year. Right now, they've got over 100 million active users. And they did that with only three engineers. Anyone has a clue who this is? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty well-known fact right now. It's Instagram. And I'm sure you know by now how they've done it, right? They've all done it on Amazon Web Services. Um, and we're really proud of that. Um, now, cloud is like a, a fertilizer that creates startups. That's a tweet um, or a quote from Eric Ries, the author of The Lean Startup, which is sometimes referred to as the, 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 the startup bible. Uh, it has a lot of very powerful concepts, and some of those we'll touch upon as we, as we talk today. Um, Eric Ries and The Lean Startups are very well known. Steve Blank, who's his mentor in a way, is maybe a bit less well known in this part of the world, but he's, amongst others, um, the author of The Four Steps to Epiphany and a professor of entrepreneurship um, and a professor of entrepreneurship at, uh, at Stanford. Um, one of the things he said is that Amazon Web Services... So what Steve Blank said is that, that Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, has accidentally, or maybe on purpose, uh, basically powered a whole generation of applications. And what we're seeing with Amazon is that a lot of those, a lot of those applications run on AWS right now. A lot of this, the use cases that you see in startups, from e-commerce to gaming, um, social media, obviously software as a service, and even um, more complex workloads like DNA sequencing, big data, Hadoop, and so on. A lot of use cases and a lot of Indian companies, and some of this were already mentioned earlier by, by Werner Fogels, right? So all these companies you see here in India run on Amazon Web Services. And the benefit that they're getting is that they're getting the same benefits as these companies that you now see, who also all run on Amazon. Some of them run entirely on Amazon, like Dropbox. Others for certain applications, like for example, Samsung, their smart TVs. Um, all the content and applications uh, that you get in their smart hub TVs run on Amazon Web Services. Uh, I'm not sure if any of you have seen the recent uh, landing of the Curiosity Mars rover that NASA did on Mars. Um, all the pictures went straight from Mars into S3 into the Amazon cloud and shared with the entire world. Really exciting. So a lot of these guys in India get the same benefits as these companies or get the same benefits uh, in specific use cases, like Pepper Fry and Ink Food get the same benefits, the same quality, the same platform as the big guys like Etsy and, and obviously Amazon.com itself. Uh, we talked about India Games earlier and, and Playblazer. Um, you know, Zynga still uses it a lot, so does Sega and so on. So we can go on and on. Now, when we talk with startups, we often put ourselves in, in your shoes, right? You go from an idea to a minimum viable product. At some stage, you want to get to scale and you want to get to profitability. What's interesting, by the way, is that if you're not in a startup but in a large enterprise, a lot of new projects or development of new applications goes the same. There's an idea for a new project or for a new app. You need to have a first beta version available to start doing your testing and see whether it works, the user testing and so on. And at some stage, you need to roll it out at scale and generate the benefits for, for your user, for your community. So in each of these stages, you'll face different challenges, right? And they're not always easy to overcome. At that first stage, it's really about product. Do we have a product? Can we ship it? Can we develop it faster? Can we develop it cheaper? Let's say that you've managed those challenges properly. The next stage is now, I've got my MVP in the market. Now I need to get to skill. Question is, is there a market? Are customers coming? Are they buying from us? If they all come, can we actually deal with 
like the, the, the spiky traffic that Instagram dealt with or a lot of other startups that we work with. So that's, those are challenges that are very serious. And then as you get to scale, at some stage you want to build a viable business. Why do you want to you know, make money as well? So it's all about profitability. Can we monetize? Can we continue to focus on our business and generate new revenue uh, generating opportunities? Can we reduce cost and so on? So what we're going to do in this track is we're going to take you through each of those. I'll start with a quick summary of each of these three areas and how we help, and then the next sessions will we'll focus more deeply on those. So first of all, when you get from idea to your demo or your minimum viable product, it's all about experimenting more, developing cheaper, and shipping faster. And some of these concepts, again, were mentioned earlier by, by Werner in the more generic context. But for you as a startup, this is crucial. The fact that you don't need to spend months and months on capacity planning, uh, configuring and, 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 and looking at what hardware you use, then doing logistics and staging, but you can launch in minutes, is very powerful when you want to get to market quicker, right? The fact that you pay as you use experimentation, and we'll talk more about that later on, is really powerful. And then there's a whole lot of, of SDKs, deployment tools, and there's a lot of, of great uh, scripts and repositories in, in Git, for example, um, that allow you to use and achieve shorter development cycles. So a few examples, if you go to aws.amazon.code, there's a lot of sample code and libraries available. Um, iOS, Android, Ruby, PHP, .NET, Java, you name it. If you look further, you get all these SDKs for these types of languages that we can offer. And when you, for example, click on PHP and we look at some PHP apps later on, um, there's a lot of information where you can download, where you can share with the community, uh, have forums where you can discuss things and best practices, um, and so on. Developer bloggers, you can see. Um, and another thing that's really powerful is that we've worked with so many startups globally that we've started to see best practices. We've started to see if you're a web app or if you're a game, what does your optimal architecture look like? And we've made those available. We call them reference architectures, and they're available on our website. Now, what you see here is a very complete, full, maybe somewhat complex looking architecture. That's at scale. What we help you with in our solution architects and account managers that we have in India are trained to help you think through where you want to get to at scale, but how do you start small? And start small in your architecture and, and, and build as you grow. And we'll talk about that later. Uh, one Indian company that has really benefited us is, is Nordstar, uh, which does uh, location and safety tracking uh, for, uh, for kids in bus, for example. And they've, they've basically indicated that AWS has allowed them to really rapidly and efficiently and quickly launch their apps and actually roll out, get to market 60% faster. It's pretty powerful. By the way, uh, getting started is free. There's a free tier available. We'll talk about it in a bit more detail later on. It might have been mentioned this morning. But there's a lot of services where if you get going, if you want to start sandboxing and try out stuff, you can do it for free. It's pretty awesome. Now, let's say that you are done with that first stage, you've got your MVP in the market, and you want to scale, you want to grow. How do we help there? Well, first of all, as we spoke about earlier, is we allow you to leverage AWS to reach customers in minutes globally. The platform is also incredibly elastic and scalable. So again, if all these users come, you don't have to worry about it, we can scale easily. And more and more, we actually can help you with reaching a large and global customer base by leveraging, for example, our partner network, if you're more in the um, ISV or consulting space, or if you're mobile apps, uh, we've recently launched the, uh, the Amazon App Store um, in, in India as well. We, we've seen this this morning. Um, what we might not have seen is, is where those uh, regions are. So we have regions globally, availability zones, uh, a lot of edge locations that, again, allow you to reach the world in a matter of minutes. The elasticity is not just from a cloud point of view, but from a lot of other servers as well. Super scalable databases, super scalable storage, uh, the content distribution network that allows you to manage petabytes of data easily. It's very powerful. And someone like India Games has really benefited from this. What you see a lot with games is you launch a new game, everyone comes, over time it tapers off. But even on a single day, traffic goes up and traffic goes down. So that ability to deal with that at scale is, is very important. Now, the cost thing has been mentioned a lot. You've, you've seen Kingsley Wood speak earlier. Um, so right now, I won't spend too much time on that. What is important, though, is that the customer that was mentioned earlier, Redbus, is a very um, 
good example of a successful uh, Amazon customer in India um, have realized about 30 to 40 percent savings by leveraging AWS. And what I like about the quote from, from their founder is that they didn't just compare like a single standard server, physical server with AWS, but they looked at the overall experience and how they could save time in their IT, in their development, in their staff cost as well. Look at it holistically and you'll be able to generate a lot of savings. Now, that was kind of like a summary of how we provide value um, throughout the life cycle. But how do we enable the ecosystem? Well, obviously we do events like these where we, where we zoom in a lot and where we spend a lot of time focused on startups and developers. We also do a lot of um, third party events. So we work with guys like Startup City. Um, we've been actively participating uh, last year in, uh, in Tech Sparks, a big event uh, organized by yourstory.in. Uh, we work with guys like Angel Hack that organize hackathons. Um, a lot of stuff in India, but also things in, in the Philippines, in Cebu, where we did Startup Weekend, or Echelon, which is the largest startup conference in Singapore. All of these we actively work on. We organize a lot of events ourselves, again, like these summits, but also like AWS reInvent, which is our customer and developer conference that we organize every year in Las Vegas. We did the, last, uh, the first one last year uh, with about 6,000 people. It was massive, really interesting, and we're doing another one this year. Um, any one of you took the labs this morning, right? Okay, quite a few guys did the labs, right? So that is training. Training is super important. So we do a lot of training. We organize a lot of events, uh, AWS 101, which is basically more of an introduction to cloud. Uh, we do technical trainings, 101s as we call them, or 201s. Beanbag sessions we've done last year in a number of cities in India, which were very much focused on the startup community and mentoring, not just on technology, but more startups in general. And we roll out a lot of more scalable training and practices, like the startup webinars that we ran throughout uh, Asia Pacific in the last few months. In addition, we work very closely, as Gaurav mentioned, with a lot of accelerators, VCs, seed funds, uh, angel investors, and so on, um, here in India, in the rest of APEC, as well as with the top guys in the US, the largest uh, investors that you can imagine. That ecosystem is really important for us. And it actually benefits our customers. Here's one example of a company from India, MindTickle, that talks about how the whole AWS ecosystem actually made the platform robust. It's not just what we provide, it's also the tools that other people around it provide. So, with that, what's next? The next session, we'll zoom into how you get from idea to minimum viable product, and we actually will see some stuff live on stage from zero to production in 40 minutes. After that, we have a session on how startups benefit from AWS. We're very honored to have the founder of Playblazer, uh, as well as the principal architect um, from Inmobi, live on stage, uh, as well as uh, Shekhar Kirani, uh, one of the partners of Excel. After that, we have a session on scaling seamlessly and global, going global. Again, this will zoom into now that you are in the market, how do you scale up fast? And then we end with running lean with optimized architecture. We help customers reduce costs all the time. What Kingsley Wood focused on earlier is some of the commercial models we offer to allow you to save cost. What this session will focus on is what things can you do from an architecture point of view to keep your cost down, right? It's very important. We call it cost-aware architecting. Now, before we get started, let's look at some basics. Now, what I know in an audience like this, some of you have been using AWS for years, are really advanced. Some of you are maybe not that advanced. Um, so let's start with some of the basics. And talk about EC2, which many of you will know is basically uh, our virtual servers in the cloud, available in either Linux um, or uh, Win. Oh, we have a question there. Um, L. Uh, you know, I was talking to some of our customers in the uh, SA booth, yeah. and I realized that while some of the customers have actually tried out the platform, others have really not even seen our management console. Okay. So it'll be really helpful if we can actually do a demo for our customers. Okay. Uh, so are you able to do that? A demo. Um, is there any um, AWS solution architect in the house? Oh, there you go. Yeah. Hey, Ganesh. Welcome. Can you maybe help Al and, and sure. maybe show us some of these things? Hey, hey, uh, great. So let's take it yeah. from there. Let us take it from here. I'll leave you guys to it and show Thanks, them Peter. some of the basics, right? Thanks, Peter. Okay. Thanks.